welcome to Podocyte Talk. In today's episode, we're diving into a recent study exploring the relationship between glucose levels and bradycardia in patients with diabetes mellitus and chronic kidney disease. These patients face a heightened risk of cardiac arrhythmias, including bradycardia, which may contribute to sudden cardiac death. While low blood sugar has long been implicated in adverse cardiovascular events, this study sought to reassess its direct impact on cardiovascular outcomes, particularly in high-risk populations like those with diabetes mellitus and chronic kidney disease. By simultaneously monitoring interstitial glucose and electrocardiogram over a seven-day period, researchers investigated the occurrence of bradycardia in 85 insulin-treated patients. Bradycardia episodes were identified in 19 of the 85 patients, 22%, and the episodes were strongly linked to relative glucose levels, with the highest frequency occurring during periods of lowest glucose, particularly between 06 to 09 and 12 to 15 erd. These findings suggest that relative glucose levels, rather than absolute low blood sugar thresholds, play a critical role in the onset of bradyarrhythmias. The study emphasizes the need for a more personalized definition of low blood sugar to better understand its connection to bradycardia in high-risk diabetes mellitus and chronic kidney disease patients. Additionally, let's explore another impactful study on kidney transplantation and weight changes in candidates with obesity. Unintentional weight loss, often seen as a hallmark of frailty, predicts worse outcomes post-kidney transplantation. However, weight loss in candidates with obesity is frequently recommended to improve transplant eligibility. A multi-center cohort study examined the impact of pre evaluation weight change on listing and waitlist mortality in 1,361 candidates with obesity, body mass index greater than or equal to 30 kilograms per square meter. Among these candidates, 48% had stable weight, 17% experienced weight gain, 16% reported unintentional weight loss, and 20% achieved intentional weight loss in the year prior to evaluation. Frail candidates with obesity who maintained stable weight had a 27% lower chance of being listed compared to non-frail candidates with stable weight. Weight gain and unintentional weight loss were associated with a significantly reduced likelihood of listing and higher weightless mortality among frail candidates. Intentional weight loss did not significantly affect listing chances but was associated with higher weightless mortality in frail candidates. These results highlight the need for clinician-supervised weight loss strategies in frail candidates with obesity to optimize transplant outcomes. Unintentional weight loss, in particular, may reflect worsening frailty and higher risks during the waitlist period. Lastly, we review a study assessing complement activation in critically ill adults with acute kidney injury. Critically ill adults with acute kidney injury experience high morbidity and mortality, and current treatment options remain limited. Researchers analyzed complement activation, measured by urine BA fragment levels, to explore its association with acute kidney injury and organ failure outcomes. In a cohort of 439 intensive care unit patients, 252 had no acute kidney injury, 124 had stage 1 acute kidney injury, 43 had stage 2 acute kidney injury, and 20 had stage 3 acute kidney injury. Urine by fragment levels collected at intensive care unit admission and during the first 24 hours were significantly higher in patients with persistent acute kidney injury compared to those with acute kidney injury recovery or no acute kidney injury. Increased urine BA fragment levels correlated with more severe organ failure, fewer intensive care unit and ventilator-free days, and higher mortality risk. Importantly, a doubling of urine BA fragment levels was linked to a 6.6-fold higher likelihood of persistent acute kidney injury. These findings suggest that urine BA fragments may serve as a valuable biomarker 
for acute kidney injury severity and persistence, with potential implications for future treatments targeting complement pathways. Join us on Podocyte Talk as we continue to bring you the latest insights into kidney disease research and treatment. Check the description for links to the studies discussed in this episode, and stay tuned for more clinical innovations and evidence-based updates. Tune in now to stay informed.